Jeff, are you looking forward to the upcoming general election? I am, yeah. yeah. It's going to be, a, uh, obviously it's going to be a, a very interesting general election. Um, I think Baslin is going to be, South Baslin and East Thurrock, I should say, under the new boundaries. Um, I think that's going to be particularly interesting because we've had a long-standing incumbent and uh, the seat is up for grabs. The long-standing incumbent, Angela Smith, um, says that she's the underdog now. Would you agree with her? Um, it depends how much credence you put to the polls. Um, Any body defending a seat is de facto an underdog. You have most to lose. So, from that perspective, she's probably right. What are the issues um, within this constituency that you're most comfortable with and enjoy tackling? I and and my. my colleagues, my party colleagues, my uh, family colleagues, because we're all colleagues um, politically, are enormously concerned for our environment and I would put that at the key of my approach to the, um, to the election. I know there are other very important issues but an MP has to represent the people as they are, where they are, and this area of East Thurrock, South Basildon, if you look at it on an on a, on a overview map, you take a, an aerial view of the whole constituency, it is so enormously diversified, um, it would be a great joy to represent it because of the, um, the huge contrast that you find. And, and as you mentioned environment, DP World, an opportunity or a problem? Both. Um, it's, it's going to be an, obviously a, a great opportunity from the point of view of uh, employment prospects for um, people in, in, in both Thurrock and Basildon. Um, quite how that's going to pan out, I don't know. Um, whether uh, I think there'll probably be equal opportunity for, for both areas from the point of view of employment. But environmentally, there are challenges, obviously, the, the whole question of access. Um, how this enormous number of lorries, containers, etc., are going to be transported through what is a, a, an area with a reasonably fragile sort of infrastructure, road transport infrastructure. Um, prospect of hundreds of lorries going up the manor way, you know, is a little bit daunting, I think, for uh, most people. And indeed, hundreds of lorries every day. Uh, absolutely, yeah, yeah. And um, going in a variety of directions, of course. In the longer term, um, it may have enormous implications for the um, transport infrastructure of the area. Um, but it's a chicken and egg, isn't it? Um, with, as with most big developments, whether residential, or commercial, industrial, um, where do you start? You want to get the you want to get the um, the facilities in there. You want to get the the, the jobs there. But um, if you don't have the infrastructure, to make it work, um, you're going to have problems. And with all sorts of developments, you have to bear in mind that there are already people living there. You know, um, and um, it is also about them and uh, their quality of life. We've, in, we've interviewed Angela and Stephen Metcalf on many occasions, and, and also now, uh, since the European elections, Kerry Smith and UKIP. Kerry thinks he can win. What do you gauge a success come May the 6th, so to speak? What do I personally What would you call success? Um, winning. Um, but I, I'm, I'm not going to make predictions on, on the outcome of the election. Um, there are so many different indicators floating around. Um, we hear a lot from each party about um, the need for change, and I thoroughly subscribe to that. Um, but it sounds like a cliche, but politics is a funny old game. And um, these days, well, we had an example today, didn't we, from the States. You know, one of the safest, if not the safest, democratic seat gone to the Republicans. Anything can happen. Yeah. Some may, some may say that um, a year ago Barack Obama was the next JFK. Some might also say that now he's the next Jimmy Carter. 
Um, but speaking of change in politics, um, how has liber liberalism or liberal democracy, in your time, how do you think it's changed? Um, well, it's certainly changed um, from the one obvious point of view that um, we have a much higher representation at all levels um, in government in the, in, in the country. I was first elected to um, Basildon Council in 1981. Um, that, at that time, um, and I, I, I went to my first, um, what we used to call the Liberal Assembly in those days, up in Dundee, and um, we were amongst, I was one of a, a, a very small number of elected councillors. You know, I can't give you the precise figure, but if there were a, hundred elected Liberal councillors at the time, I'd be surprised. Now, I came in in 81 when the old alliance was really starting to take off. And that really kick-started, I think, the renewal of Liberal policies, Liberal democracy, um, which has progressed now over the last 30 years or so. And obviously the number of MPs has gone up enormously. Um, the number of councillors, as I say, every level, district, county, unitary, um, has well, manifold increases. On a national level, let's conjecture, a hung parliament, Lib Dems, kingmakers, would you, would you encourage uh, Nick <coughs> to, to uh, negotiate with both parties? Um, well, I think, first of all, one has to see what the balance of the support across the parties is. Um, I think there are certain um, things where we, if we're true to our principles, have to be non-negotiable. Um, uh, there are certain areas of policy, I'm not talking specific policy, but certain areas. Liberal democracy is a lot about gut feeling, and you know when something is just not right, and it shouldn't be happening. Um, so I'm not going to make any predictions as to, in that scenario, who the Lib Dems would go with. Um, I, th I think that that's going to be a decision for a, a much nearer the, the time after the election. Would you welcome a, a reintroduction in our society of more liberal ideals in that, if we go all the way back 19th century, and the idea of non-interference and that people feel today's society, what they call the nanny state, do you think there's a there's a a need for a bit of a, a, a to take a seat back and let people live their lives. Um, well, I mean, we have moved on from the nineteenth century, and uh, conditions are not what they were um, in in Gladstone's time or even Lloyd George's time. Um, we respect very much the in, the individual, but you know we we've moved into a. a a European, a global scenario, and um, it is not enough now for individuals to be islands unto themselves. It doesn't work anymore. We live within communities, although Mrs. Thatcher would have had us deny that, um, but communities exist, and for those communities to function, whether locally, nationally, internationally, globally, there has to be a lot more tolerance, there has to be a lot more understanding of the other point of view.